Hello grade 12s, welcome to today's lesson. It's economics with Ms. Piwe. Today we are looking at monopolistic competition because in our previous lesson we were focusing on the oligopoly market and we looked at what uh, drives the market in terms of the producers um, that function under a, an oligopoly market. So let's move right on to monopolistic competition as it's a bit of a tongue twister, so let's continue. So what are the characteristics of monopolistic competition? So we know that here the products are differentiated, so we are not dealing with a homogeneous uh, product. Um, there is product differentiation that actually takes place under this um, um, market condition or competition. So that's an important point for us to note um, that the products are differentiated. Uh, products are similar but not identical. Um, if they were identical, then we will identical, we will refer to them as homogeneous um, products. So they are similar in that they satisfy the same need of the consumer. So products are differentiated, they're not identif identical, but they are similar in that, that they um, um, satisfy the same need um, of the consumer. There may be differences in packaging, but the product is the same. For example, sugar and salt. Um, so the, the, the one company could use um, different packaging and the other could ch uh, choose to do a much more sophisticated um, uh, package for the product. So, but the whole point is that they will satisfy the same need. Um, if you add sugar onto your cup of tea, um, it will sweeten it up a bit. Um, so it's served that purpose, uh, whether it's this brand or that brand, or was it packaged in a container and so on. So um, that doesn't really matter because we know that um, there may be differences in terms of um, packaging. So that's an interesting point to note. Moving on, so differentiated products create opportunities uh, for non-price competition, uh, for example, advertising, okay? So you are selling a differentiated product, and so your packaging could be your marketing strategy. So the way that you package a product, you can capitalize on that when you are doing your marketing. You can say, you know, we serve the best quality sugar uh, because it is packaged in a very fancy and attractive manner. So by doing so, you will be able to attract customers to buy your product. And if you attract customers to buy your product, that in return will increase um, your market share. So it does create a lot of opportunities for non-price competition. So this is um, a, a measures or strategies um, that one can use in order to increase um, their um, client or, or customer base because um, they have a, a lot of um, strategies that they've put in place in order to attract more customers in the business. Moving on, so we're looking at monopolistic competition. It displays a hybrid structure. It is a combination of competition and a monopoly, okay? So um, we know that it's got a hybrid structure because you, you do find competition and also it has certain elements um, of a monopoly. Um, so what do we mean by this? So we will clarify this as we go through this um, example. So there are many sellers um, in, the, in this market. So this indicates the element of competition. So this ties up with our point over there when we are looking at the hybrid um, structure, saying that you know there is competition and also there's um, elements of a monopoly. So the fact that we have many sellers in this market is an indication that uh, competition is uh, promoted or is seen as an important um, factor in the economy because there are options available to consumers and they are not limited uh, to one firm or industry in order to acquire certain services or products. What about entry? Because when looking at market structures, entry is an important element that will indicate um, uh, the, the, the nature of the market in terms of the barriers um, that are put in that 
um, market. So if there's free entry, we know um, that will resemble a free competition or uh, perfect competition. Uh, but if there are restrictions or limitations that are put into place in order to block other businesses from entering the market space, and we will now have to explore um, those barriers. So entry into the market is easy. Okay, so what does this mean? So there are less barriers that are put into place in terms of entry and also in terms of exit in this market. So it is a good thing that you know you don't have all these things um, that are put into um, uh, the market in order to block out um, other competitors. Um, so entry into this market um, is easy. So businesses have little control over um, the price of the product. Um, each business sells um, at, its, at its own uh, price since a single price cannot uh, be determined for the differentiate, differentiated uh, product. Um, so because of the range of prices um, could apply. So you are selling a differentiated uh, product. Uh, we know that uh, when we say your product is differentiated, it, it's got certain um, features that are added onto it to make it different from that of your um, competitors. Um, so that's an, 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 an advantage that can be given um, in terms of price. Um, if you are in a position where you are selling a product that is differentiated, um, your price range uh, will be based on the, the fact that you are selling something that is different um, in that market. Okay, and So that is based on product differentiation, so just be aware of that. Um, information for buyers and sellers is incomplete. Um, so in a perfect competition, we know that information is made available to the buyers and sellers, uh, but in this regard, the information is incomplete. So the buyers and sellers do not get exclusive or do not get all the information about um, the product. Okay, so some um, information is, is, is held back or uh, the, the manufacturer may decide not to share the information because that information will give others a competitive advantage. So we say that the information here is incomplete. So we come across collusion again. We looked at this at our previous or during our previous um, lesson. Um, it is not possible under monopolistic competition because here you can't, you don't have those large um, companies or businesses um, in, in small numbers that can actually come together and agree on the price um, in the market. So here it's not possible because you've got many competitors. So it will be a mission to get 20 people to sit down and actually talk about fixing prices in the market. But if there are two or three businesses that are involved in, in that market or industry, it would be a lot easier to sit them down and actually negotiate um, the pricing policy and strategy in that market. So here, uh, collusion is not possible at all. Okay, so what other businesses um, form part of this? So your restaurants are, are quite common, and in this regard, your plumbers, your lawyers, insurance brokers, hairdressers, funeral parlors, the estate agents, are all examples of monopolistic competition. Okay, so you, how many restaurants do we have in Johannesburg? And how many plumbers can you call? Lawyers, insurance brokers, hairdressers, you know, uh, uh, funeral pilots, and all that, and, 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 and estate agents as well. Um, when I drive around um, on the weekend, you know, I think every weekend I see a different um, estate agent company that's been advertised or that is selling a product um, in the area. So there's so many of these businesses that it is not possible to actually form agreements in terms of fixing the price. So collusion becomes um, difficult or impossible based on the fact that there are so many of these businesses and it's not really worth it to try and initiate a discussion over fixing prices. So just be aware of that. Okay, so let's quickly recap on what we have done thus far in this lesson. So we have spoken about the differentiated products. Uh, we said these products are similar, but they are not identical. If they were identical, 
we would refer to them as homogeneous products. Um, they are all similar in that they satisfy the same need of the consumer and they may be differences in terms of packaging, but the product is the same. And sugar and salt were the examples that uh, were given. And then also differentiated products uh, creates opportunities for non-price competition, for example, advertising, because there is packaging that is involved. The fact that there is packaging involved, so I'm just going to go up, means that you can decide on how you package your product. And you remember, packaging can be used as a marketing uh, tool, because if you're a product is packaged so well, it could attract customers. You know, it could be like, you know, a, a generic product that can be easily accessed. But by the fact that it's packaged so differently and so nicely, um, that could uh, result in you gaining um, customers. Also, monopolistic competition displays a hybrid, which is a combination of competition and a monopoly. So there are many sellers. So this indicates that the element of competition does exist in this market structure or in this competition. Entry into the market is easy. So there are less barriers that are put into place in order to block other businesses and competitors. Um, and we spoke, we spoke about the fact that businesses have little control over the price of the product. Each business sells um, at its own price, um, since a single price cannot be determined for the differentiated products because um, of a range of prices um, could apply. And then information for buyers and sellers is incomplete, unlike in perfect competition where the information is made available to the buyers and sellers, um, in this market, um, the information will be incomplete. And then we said restaurants, plumbers, lawyers, insurance brokers, and so on, are examples of monopolistic um, competitors. Right, let's go back to non-price competition. Um, differentiated products create opportunities for non-price uh, competition. In other words, competition is not based on prices, but, but rather on factors relating to the product's uniqueness. Okay, so on our previous lesson, we did chat about this, um, that companies will, or businesses will now rely on this uh, marketing structure in order to attract customers uh, to buy from their business. And also, uh, when they are looking at growing their market share, they would consider looking at the non-price competition and use it as a strategy in order to retain and gain customers, but also uh, to grow their market share. So the focus will be on the product's uniqueness because if your product is differentiated, it means it is unique. So it's different than that of your competitor. So the, the, the business will focus on this or will capitalize on this when they are wanting to attract more customers to buy from the business. So they will e exploit um, the, the, the fact uh, or um, the, the issues around the uniqueness of their product because they know that they can use that in order to draw more customers uh, to come and buy from the business. So we will be looking at um, such factors as advertising campaigns because if you've got an excellent advertising campaign, that could result in you increasing your sales in the business and when your sales um, go up, it means that you are gaining, gaining more space um, in the market share. So it's important that we consider these things. So advertising campaigns and further product differentiation are powerful forms of non-price competition. Um, it's important, I think, for, for, for you, those do business studies as well. Uh, you, you do spend a, a, a bit of time when you're doing the marketing function um, looking at um, the advertising campaigns. Um, so if you've got an advertising campaign, you've got a design structure to create more awareness uh, about the product that you are selling in your business and you use various um, advertising platforms in order to inform consumers about the product that you are selling in your business. So advertising campaigns could be used um, in terms of non-price competition to attract more customers into the business and to help the business to grow its market share. The greater the product differentiation, 
the less price elastic um, the demand for the product will be. Okay, so the fact that you are not you know playing around with the price, but you are focusing on the uniqueness of your product in order to attract customers. So there will be less price um, elastic that will be happening um, in your market because you are focusing on the product differentiation and you are not playing around with your price because remember when you play around with your price you could create a price war in this um, market and we try to avoid that because uh, that eliminates the profits in the market because now your competitor is going to respond to what you are doing in terms of the price so then they will say okay he's dropping his prices so we also going to drop our prices so we don't want that situation we actually want a situation Situation where we can sell our products at market share and be able to earn a profit or even better to maximize, maximize the profits um, in the business. So large sums of money are spent on research, development and advertising to build a loyal consumer group. Um, actually, it is quite interesting because I was teaching my class um, a particular topic and I was using the fast food industry to try and explain um, how the marketing how or, or how intense the marketing is um, in the fast food industry that uh, fast food brands are spending huge amounts of money on research development and advertising in order to build a loyal customer base because um, the fast food industry is all about sales uh, the more customers you have and uh, the more um, opportunities you have in order to gain um, a greater market share but also uh, to enjoy high profits and um, so they were just showing in a documentary that I was I was showing my class um, um, how this particular brand was spending so much money on research but also on development because you have to come up with more differentiated products in order to retain the customers and also to attract new customers to come and, and support or to come and buy from your business. So extensive research is important uh, when you are looking at attracting a new um, customer um, base. And also if, if, if you want to retain and attract more customers, uh, product development needs to happen as well. So before we continue, how about we take a short break and I will see you right after this.